and uh, welcome to one another uh, very very interesting talk uh, during this lockdown that we having by none other than vishal punjabi uh, he needs no introduction uh, for us vishal has been very very close and very very special uh, he's been among the earlier uh, supporters of f stop i'll just quickly introduce uh, f stop uh, f stop is uh, a basically a photography uh, organization started about 10 years back by me uh, devang devang if you could say hi and and ashit hi so all three of us are photographers and we we started this this organization about 10 years back and we've been very very lucky to be supported by some very very eminent speakers uh, who have always agreed at a short notice and and spoken at various uh, platforms uh, for us so during this lockdown we had this idea of bringing in eminent speakers and hosting about 15 speakers during these 21 days and and believe me guys it's been so so smooth uh, uh, from the speakers side who have all agreed i literally spoke to vishal last week and and he immediately said what great idea do you have and i'm in with it so thank you so much for for agreeing uh, for this vishal we, we are so of lucky course. to host you again uh we also have joseph <clears throat> radik today Hi, who's, who's again needs no introduction he's going to be helping us co moderate this event uh that we're having so over to you vishal we have about 90 minutes to prove from here enjoy 90 this. minutes yeah. yay so i'm here to talk about inspiration and the business of filmmaking because i feel like this time that we have these 21 days it would be nice to be able to use it well and try and study different businesses different ideas that people have executed and some would call me mildly successful at what i do but it didn't happen overnight it happened with a lot of hard work a lot of clarity and i wanted to talk about the kind of clarity that i tried to achieve um when i was very young film making came very naturally to me when i was in ghana i'm going to share a small presentation with all of you so it gives you a sense of my journey here the mistakes i've made along the way that would then help you to take the right decisions you want to make i created the wedding filmer in 2010 but my journey started way before that i grew up in ghana a small country in west africa um where i remember at the young age of 12 i learned about community about um indian culture about bollywood and the diwali balls that everyone would have my family would go on holidays and wherever these events happened i always had a small jvc video camera with me um it was 1992 that my father bought it for me i was out of 12 years old and i shot every family documentary we ever had and i had it complete with running commentary and i would edit it and i would have titles to it and my dad would fully support my hobby as he would call it and he kept buying me new cameras up until uh 1999 on 2000 he bought me my first digital camera which was a mavica which could take pictures i used that and i came eventually to india to work in design with shahrukh khan um and i left england where i was studying um working with charok i i learned a lot um about bollywood and everything that i had to learn the clarity was always there that i wanted to make a film and now i just had to figure out how to do it my father wasn't very rich so he couldn't afford to send me to england um to study film um so i had to drop out of university eventually i came to india um to work in film so i can i can gain that knowledge i needed on set and on set i got to expose myself to every kind of element that could be from cinematography to jimmy jib operation to being an assistant director to being a costume helper to being somebody who would help with lighting or um with with uh with acting um stage marking focusing um i played with everything and then came the world of post production now because i was inducted into the company i got a chance to work in the post production studios while the films were being edited now not all assistant directors had the access to post production that i had and with a lot of clarity again i wanted to learn as much as i could and i learned all the editing tools i needed to learn um and one day my director farah khan who was doing advertising then with us after the film had ended um fell sick and she couldn't direct the commercial she was supposed to direct so she asked me to direct for her and so i did and that was my step into film direction Now I was directing an ad with Shahrukh Khan and you realize that when you are working with Shahrukh Khan you're very spoiled as a director. You get everything you want. You get the best sets, you get the best lighting, you get the best costumes, you get the best hair, makeup and wardrobe. 
you don't have to do much you just have to say action and gut the agency are behind you sharuk knows what he's doing better than most people do um at the most you'll ask him to take a couple more takes and you're done and everything is storyboard and everything is pre decided um and i'm talking about this because suddenly at this point of time there's a life changing situation that happened in 2010 i had a life altering situation i was working in india um on a work visa and my work visa expired and um due to situations beyond my control they couldn't get renewed at a certain time and when i could get them renewed um it became a big problem politically and i got deported from the country this was actually in 2007 and at this point of time i was at the peak of my career i was doing ads i was oops sorry i was doing ads i was doing films i was doing um i was writing my script to become a filmmaker i had got myself a new girlfriend all of a sudden and i thought i'm going to marry this person and life is going to be great but then when i got deported i got i was sent back to ghana now i left ghana technically although i'm from there and i was born there i left ghana when i was 12 years old and at that point of time it was it was a very protected life i led now as an adult there's a different exposure you want to have to the country and i was stuck in my father's house which was in the jungle because he worked in timber and no access to the internet no access to telephones i was disconnected from the world and i felt my life was over um i went into depression i i lost everything i had my girlfriend then dumped me um i thought there was no coming out of this there was i i found it i found it hard to accept that this could happen to me failure hit me and it hit me hard and i didn't know how to come out of it at that time it felt and then you with time over over a year i realized that there's only that much sorrow one person can take at some point you get tired of being depressed or at some point you get tired and you say okay fuck it get up and do something um so i got up and i moved myself to the capital city and i worked with um a local production house who did nothing much at that point of time until i came along and then we bought ourselves a red camera um he invested some money into me and he believed in my work and then i started directing commercials locally my first commercial i landed was 5000 rupees no sorry 5000 um that's about 2 and 1/2 lakh rupees back then and to make a film in that much of money was difficult because i had to first find a crew get sets um get a cast get costumes shoot them and and edit it and put it together and all of this in a country where there is no filmmaking as such but i decided to do so and in doing so i found myself as a filmmaker all over again because now i didn't have the cushion of a big budget shahrukh khan ad or a film i had um nothing at $5000 and a ragtag crew of street painters and mechanics to help me with my grips and my art and i put this crew together and we ended up in a span of a year i ended up doing some of the biggest commercials in africa we did commercials for telephone companies for mobile networks for all sorts of fmcg products all around the country we even did a, an african cup of union nations ad with the footballers all over africa with didier drogba and like big superstars it was amazing and i suddenly realized that i'm fine this what i considered horrible happening to me um was probably the best thing that could happen to me um and i found myself as a filmmaker all over again and then i came to india in 2010 and i shot my own wedding when i got married and i built the wedding film off my son was a big inspiration in what i do hence the whirling dervish and our logo the sufi um sign his name is sufi um and i think in 2010 me and my girlfriend then were living together and she got pregnant and um out of the sheer desperation to succeed i knew i wanted to be a filmmaker i had picked up the small camera in africa so i knew how to shoot and so in my little home on my first ever computer that i had bought myself an imac bought myself a small camera and i went ahead and i shot my first wedding um very clear that this is what this is going to be beautiful and this is going to work and nobody shoots weddings like this and i can shoot films and if nobody wants to make my big film or my small film i'm going to make a film myself it's okay if it's a wedding film it went viral instantly it did really really well i moved to a bigger studio here which was a really pretty studio and we were hosting around in that studio for a while i moved to another studio a bigger studio even then 5 years later and in 10 years we've moved to the fourth studio which is a huge bungalow in versova which is really pretty and now we are the wedding film as we know as we are known to be and this doesn't come easy because this comes with a lot of 
experimenting and risk taking risk taking is a big factor in what i have done um to succeed risks in the fact that when i was beginning my company i didn't have much money there was either paying rent or buying a lens um so the idea is you buy the lens you save the money um get better quality have access to it at all times and um eventually you will make the money back um the sad the 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 the, the con to that is that you, you you don't get a booking enough and you won't have enough money to pay your rent so those are the risks you would have to decide and take and when you have a family to feed um they're very big risks for some of them but technology was changing very quickly and we had to move with that technology because if you don't move with technology you wouldn't be able to succeed so new cameras new lenses new grips um new softwares were constantly coming out at that time in between 2010 to 2015 and we had to constantly keep repurchasing and buying but with the clarity that quality um and good creativity go hand in hand um you have to be technical and you have to invest back into the market if you're going to edit on a software and you're going to pirate that software chances are the people who are making that software are not going to get paid chances are they're not going to work as hard to build the next software for you but if you buy that software and you use that software um they get paid and then will then want to make better software for you to edit with hence making your films much better so this is something i learned very early on and then came the adventures of traveling all around the world and the wedding film became popular now in doing so it's not just traveling but it's in, it's also meeting different people understanding different markets understanding different every time you travel there's a lot you can take back some can travel and make it a holiday but then you can also travel to find crew different people around the world have different ideas and that's what we started doing we started looking for crew all around the world so it can be easier for us to travel when we travel and it's a good way of expanding and then i decided to start the wedding film workshops through vinay actually was the first person f stop were the first people to ever notice what i did and say vishal i think you should come and talk to a bunch of people they might find this inspiring um and so in amdabad i think it was a baroda i'm not really i don't remember so but, it was um, amdabad it was amdabad in 2013 was, yeah. and i went then i did my first workshop and the response i get was overwhelming what i understood from there was there's a huge talent base all around the country um there are lots of people who have great ideas i have a certain exposure to a certain kind of audience but there's a certain um element of aesthetic that different people from different parts of the country bring to their cinema and i realized that lots of people want to do this and lots of people find this way more creatively satisfying than regular wedding videos or regular content that they create and there's a whole new magic if they just open their eyes um i feel like everything that we can go through today in learning about filmmaking and cameras um and inspiring the business of an idea um we can apply not just to wedding films but you can apply to any kind of film you make um you just have to know the kind of treatment you want to follow because we did so well in the wedding space and the films we went we made went viral hello hello um, can who said that some hello oh okay i missed that sorry there was a sudden hello hello so because i i worked in 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 bollywood as well and had exposure to that to that market um a lot of people in bollywood wanted me to come and start designing the weddings for them um or certain very romantic love songs because people had this impression that i can shoot weddings really well i also tell people i can shoot horror really well and action really well but nobody really believes me um but i did a couple of of, of films i did ye jawani hai deewani and suddenly that thirst and hunger came back for wanting to create more fiction is very different from non fiction i have no control over what i'm filming when when i'm at a wedding i i i, I never or very seldomly ask the bride and groom to do something specifically for me or for the camera it's always what happens real um but in bollywood you can ask for retakes you can design shots and that too based on what you've seen and then i realized the power of what i do the, the power of observation is because you you end up filming weddings you end up observing people and little habits that they have and they do very differently from how you'd normally observe an actor if you're surrounded in a film set so through this i got to expose myself to the real side of the world when it comes to weddings um hence made in heaven ka opening title sequence exposed a very real element of Uh, of what weddings would be like um and that was a big turn on and then comes music and the original kind of music that we use in our films early on i realized that using fix you and cold play tracks or using a romantic arijit song will only get you that far because 
how many times can you edit the same scene to the same music over and over again without getting bored of it or without having that feeling that you that you are creating something original um music is 50% of your film and understanding and sourcing and working with the right musicians to create music for the visuals that you have shot um makes it no less than a film the hunger in me to be a filmmaker was always there and i think just what genre was not decided filmmaking exposed my life to so much music um i collaborated with so many different musicians with the compositions that some of them i came up with some of them they came up with some of them lyrics came up with and together when when you when you put all of these ideas together and you put um the need for music in the indian wedding industry we created something like a new whole genre now which is kind of taking over the world in a very big way um we have plans to release the music um and make music videos hence creating more music all around the world and then we were lucky enough to travel to all of these countries eventually and all of these cities um to shoot weddings and spread the message of what we do um in doing this right now we have to figure out how do we begin with the basics we need something called a crew now these are my producers and the film and a company you also apart from the technical aspects of it which we're going to talk about you also need to market a company you need to position a company you need to brand a company um and these things have to come with a lot of originality they can't be mimicked over another company when the wedding film was started we didn't have anything else to back ourselves on but if you look in the, in the aesthetic of what you're doing um you look at how it's supposed to be presented and you have clarity about that idea you suddenly know that for i can give you my example i want my crew to be presented in a certain way because when we go to weddings i want to be like i want these guys to come shoot my wedding they know what they're doing and that comes from a visual that they see um i want them to be engaged when they watch something and that comes from how it's presented what it, how it's the captions you write when you when you go on instagram or on youtube um these little aspects are things that you need a crew to help you with because you can't be a jack of all trades and know everything you have to depend on people like Manveen who's on the left who is an amazing social media expert or Barvi who is a producer who has a knack of talking to fathers and mothers and getting them to understand what we do because what we do can't be explained very easily um Neha my producer who has handled and literally built this company with me has understood from scratch um and come from a very different background mind you but was so hungry for knowledge that has now become a master at what she does um she's one of the best cinemat- cinematographers i know um she interacts with people um with way more honesty um than i would ever do so um and even people like swapnali and achal who swapnali had joined me when she had just come in um when i started my company straight out out of college to work in the accounts department but with fierce loyalty dedication hard work and a thirst to learn is now heading the accounts um department in my company and achal is again somebody who has made something like this happen today um we have a very big crew um and this is the crew that makes the wedding film up um it's it, in doing this for 10 years i felt like hey we needed to celebrate right before corona virus hit and this was my way of saying thank you to everybody who's worked with me over the years um there are a lot more people but these are only people who we could fit into the picture um but there if if i had to take a picture right now there would be like 100 100 people in there who've come and gone and who helped us become who we are some of them with the visual talent that they bring people like swapan um some of them with um the music that they've added with the sound work that they've done um but i think creating a film we have to understand but one thing i learn about uh, about filmmaking from this picture is that it's not one person who makes a film it's a whole team of people who make a film you need editors you need people to um shoot the film you need people to help you produce the film you need people to help you make the film sound right and go through the color correction process you need people to help you collaborate with to just to be your second bouncing board um you need people to then sell your film to make sure people watch your film um so the whole process of of running a company is the thirst to make a good film now people ask me all this how many weddings do you shoot but why can't you shoot 100 weddings now i have to pick and choose how much can i do and do i want to do more than i can and bite off more than i can chew and become a factory or do i want to continue doing what i do for a very select few audience make it highly exclusive because good things take time to make and good things cost money to make um a good film is expensive it doesn't come cheap um having said that i think all you need to really make a film though is a camera a microphone a computer a lens and something to record your sound with a hard disk would really help you um and apart from that you need nothing else in this day and age with these few things 
you can actually make a film and most of us have these films they have these tools we have them on our phones um and you can practice and you can start the language and of storytelling through these tools that you have in this time um the reason i told you the story of my depression was to uh explain to you that people who are finding it difficult at this time for these 14 days or 21 days that we all quarantined for um i feel like if you accept that this is happening to you um because there's nothing you can do to change it um and realize that it's not only happening to you it's happening to lots of people around you um you are not alone in this situation and that if you can use this time productively so that later on when you look back at this time you don't look back and say crap i lay i wasted a whole world a whole year why i wasted 21 days because when i look back right now at the time when i got deported it took a year for me to accept that this happened um it could have very easily happened at a much shorter time um so yeah that's that's the basic path of my career um there you go oh hello baman i can't hear anybody everyone is muted no we, we've been <laughs> muted you're speaking so well you don't need to hear us yeah ayo <laughs> how's it going i met uh, i met okay. baman back in 2003 we were talking about it that day at joseph stock and i remember i remember that time vividly um how how happy i was and and how much how much we also like spent um trying to learn as much as we could um yeah. when we were when we were there and yeah you always a big supporter <laughs> uh vinay can i say something yeah yes yeah. go ahead uh vishal i think before we move on to pleasantries and everything else uh first of all what a brilliant story uh the fact that you were able to tell us so much in such a little time uh is a talent in itself uh frankly speaking yeah. the last 9 minutes is like a is like a masterclass in storytelling <laughs> literally that's what it is and uh, having been a small small part of this journey for the last what half a decade now since the two mm-hmm. of us have been working together you've been a true inspiration uh i think it's a great time to do a little round of applause for our man here before he goes on to <laughs> speaking <laughs> over to you again yeah me to talk so yes. to talk about to talk about wedding videography um mm. a lot of people ask me what do you do when you plan to shoot a wedding what do you what do you take with you you need three people to shoot a wedding um and these three people are critical it's very hard <laughs> to shoot it with two people um at least to give people the kind of films i give them now if you're giving some it depends a lot on what you're giving your client that's first the first thing you have to understand a how much are you going to give it for um and how are you going to go about making it so you sell the client my client says mujhe sab kuch dekhna hai i want to record everything <laughs> this happened to my this happened to my sister um my first exposure to an indian wedding was my sister's wedding in 2007 um when i you know 2010 i want to say no 2005 gosh my whole time table is off but at some point she was getting married and it was happening in delhi and my mom's brief to the videographer i was standing there he she's like i want to see everybody sab ko capture karo so now this guy didn't know what to do So he stood at the entrance the entire time and shot everybody coming in. Um oh. and that was my sister's wedding video for her Sangeet. She had everybody coming in and then the dances. Um so I guess people don't know a what to shoot um and they don't know what to give clients also it's such a weird space that clients don't know what to remember when it comes to videography. It's very easy to say I'll make you a wedding film. But what does your wedding film entail? What do you want to remember? Do you have a story or do you not want to tell a story? Do you like music? Do you, what kind of music and what kind of events? How are you going to explain those events and how are you going to showcase them? Are you going to showcase them in full with coverage? Are you going to show showcase them like an event like a film fair award or is it going to be like a movie? Um or is it going to be like an ad film? um and there are all sorts of people with all sorts of taste um and to to cater to those tastes is, then you understand how you're going to get to it but i think a simple way to understand is a wedding film would, would you'd want to rec- record everything in 20 minutes and tell a whole story in a day um of what happened so what's going to happen in the day the bride you first thing is find out what happens at a wedding um break it down how many events do they have um how many people are at the wedding is it happening at day or night this will decide your equipment in terms of your color um in terms of your lens how how fast do you have to be um what kind of cameras will you use do they have to be low light sensitive or can you can you cheap on that to save some money um how many points of view do you want this depends on how much time do you have to edit your film how much money do you have to pay your cinematographers um and how many cameras do you have and how many lenses do you have with those cameras there's no point three camera shooting with three zoom tele lenses um 
you might as well have three different points of view where you position those people then define you as as a filmmaker but break a scene down um a bride is entering um so you'll see her um you'll want to see the audience turning to look at her um because the mom mm. and dad will be there you'll want to remember how they felt you'd also want to see the groom's reaction um so there you go three cameras broken down now obviously the more cameras you add the more beautiful your film will be but not necessarily because then sometimes it'll get in the way of joseph and he'll want to kill you um so depending on depending on 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 how many photographers there are how big the event is um how shy the bride is how and what the budget of the film all these factors you take into consideration and then you start deciding the budget your crew your cameras your it's not a bit there's no format to it we can't say that i shoot with three cameras all the time you need three hmm. cameras yes but then now if the bride i've had a bride who's come and told me once if which i don't care what even if i get 5 minutes of video from you it's going to be better than 10 hours of some random person so just come you come alone i don't have a budget but come and she was a really pretty bride she was really sweet so i said okay fine i'll come so i went and alone with my camera i shot a little bit and i gave her a 5 minute video now with one camera for one person can shoot 5 minutes worth and give um but that's all she wanted and that's all she got um my own wedding video is only 5 minutes long um and that's and that's how long it would stay but having said that um that's how i would approach a wedding when i'm going to shoot a wedding ha huh. let's let's uh, the second part um, is sorry hmm. go ahead go ahead since nobody said anything instantly the second uh, part is when you've shot the wedding what do you do with the wedding once you've come back now it's the process of sorting your footage um going through the process of your workflow these 21 days what i am doing with my time now is looking at each step of that workflow and understanding the technology behind it and trying to get better at it now because at each step joseph you are your testimony mm. to this mm. um that even something like file transferring right. every month there's a new way of doing it there's a new yes. software to help you do it there's a new cable to make it faster yes. there's a new disk to make it cleaner yes and safer yes. um and staying up to date with these things really help you we mm. finally have the time to do so right now So I'm looking at every single stage from the time the footage comes to the office mm. which which machine is it transferred to which mm. hard disk is it transferred to is mm. there a faster hard disk it can be transferred to is there a safer hard disk it can be transferred to mm. um the process of music making we're using this time right now to look for new musicians um mm. look for look for new studios look for new sound engineers who can help us mix the films mm. listen to different kinds of mixes to help us come up with new ideas to make it more immersive and more engaging Mm, um mm. i'm looking at the process of editing and now i've discovered that there's so many new softwares sony themselves have an editing software which up until yesterday i did not know how powerful it was mm. um the cameras and the formats we use it actually is very very um useful in terms of even things like lens detection and, and magnification detection and sorting your footage out magnification wise mm. which is a very powerful tool for an editor which then suddenly makes sangeet editing so easy so then suddenly we can add a new step into our workflow which is Let's not edit the whole film on Premiere. Let's also edit some of the films on Da Vinci, or on Sony, um, and therefore making it easier. So every step, every single step is being looked into. The color correction, the LUTs we're using, um, and therefore making it far more efficient. Correct, correct. Uh, actually, to add on to this, uh, having worked with Vishal at a close distance over the last few years, uh, I find a very similar passion in. Uh, in using technology as a tool and not letting technology become the the key to your storytelling literally uh, but yeah. but using it properly to better the process and not believing that it's going to get you a better product end of the day but the no. process just gets simpler and simpler and simpler uh, it's stunning i mean we have inculcated a lot of practices uh, that the wedding filmer does having seen uh, from their end uh, everything from the way data is managed on site to the way uh, gear is handled on site uh, in fact you should delve a bit into that to the number of people who are tasked with the with this job of managing technology on site which is essentially one part is data the other part is the humongous number of cameras lenses support gear drones and other such things which all go into making this final product that's behind you vishal um yeah and there's a lot to learn in in that little bit itself Yeah I mean I think that the 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 decision to make is what to invest in when you start a business do you invest mm. in the computers and the people mm. um to process these films or do you invest in the cameras and the lenses to shoot these films um and most people who are starting out have limited resources to begin so it's a mm. tough call there's no right or wrong decision these are 
these are strengths you have to play on with your own. If you feel like you are more inclined to edit yourself and you want to learn how to edit, then obviously buy a computer, don't buy a camera. You can rent a camera for your first few shoots. The money you will save in paying an editor or the money you will be saving in paying a studio to edit your films will be far much more. However, if you feel like you have no interest and you have no patience at all to sit in front of your computer and edit, buying that computer in the beginning is not going to help you in any way. Um, so this, the, what to invest in will have to, will have to depend a lot on the strengths you have. It's, it's very easy to say, I want, I want, I want. In the beginning, everybody wants all these things. But you have to be very sharp, especially in, in this day and age, there's a lot of competition around you. Look at, you look around you and everybody wants a job. Everybody wants to make a quick buck. Everybody wants a shortcut. Um, but there is no real shortcut in success. In true mm. success, you have to put in that hard work, um, that hard work and that learning curve that people need because life is going to throw lots of hard balls and curve balls at you. This is one of them. 21 days, you can't move out. Did you save enough? Did you work hard enough earlier? Um, are, you, uh, are, you, are you brave enough to, 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 to stave off what's going to happen after this ends? Um, the chaos that's going to follow once life begins again is not going to be easy either. Um, and preparing ourselves for that I think life, after it slaps you a couple of times in the face, <laughs> teaches you how to deal with these situations. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of questions for you, Vishal. Uh, yes. Okay, starting off as a, this is a bit of a uh, selfish question. Okay. Uh, as a photographer, uh, mm -hmm. I find photography as this, it's a very solo pursuit in the, in the sense of you think of an image or you go out to capture something, you photograph it you edit it and then you share it or deliver it. That's it. It's literally one, it's a one man, uh, it's a lonely pursuit to be honest, right? Uh, while I have seen, and the more I see filmmaking, the more it is a team effort of sorts. Everything from, especially the way I see you guys work, right? Uh, even though you are by yourself, a one man army of all sorts, I know you're capable of doing everything from end to end. And if pushed to the corner, I'm sure you'll write a song and you will, you will produce it yourself and you'll sing it. You'll do the music. But not, but not well. You see, that's the <clears> exactly. Problem. Exactly. No, but, but in, even though you're capable of it, I still see that the filmmaking at the wedding filmer is a true team effort. Right. Um, and this is the one thing that I struggle to learn because uh, this is not something that comes naturally to me. Um, mm -hmm. I am used to literally this, 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 uh, this process or this workflow that, that is a single minded focus. So if, if, and I know there are a lot of us out there, photographers who want to learn filmmaking today and who want to start making films in the near future. What are the four mm -hmm. or five things that you would recommend for photographers to pick up today? Because we now have time, right? Uh, yes. What What would you suggest? So, I mean, yeah, like you said, a team, a team is a very big situation in what we do. If you notice when we shoot, um, unlike, unlike you and your team who have two cameras at their hips, Correct. we only have one most mm -hmm. of the time. I'm doing this because I want to show you my amazing team yet again. <laughs> um, huh. Now, each person plays a very strong role in this team that we have. Um, we can't shoot with two cameras because filmmaking requires something called editing. And if I am on the bride entering um, and I then move my own camera and shoot the groom, I may miss the moment the bride, the bride looks up at the groom. Um, so, which is why we have that understanding of two people. Um, so A, the, the, the strength of communicating and understanding the role of your second cinematographer and the point of view that they have. Um, because that point of view is very strong. Um, one of the things a photographer should really pick up right now in this time, if he wants to become a videographer, that's the question, right? Correct. Correct. A filmmaker. So if a, if I a filmmaker, learn filmmaking in general. Not you want to learn filmmaking in general. Hmm. I think most importantly, the, the, your sense of treatment, because mm -hmm. you know when, when you have picture and, and as a photographer, you only have the picture. Even mm -hmm. in a slideshow, you may have you may have a little bit of of, of sound um, mm -hmm. in terms of music, mm -hmm. but true sound design, um, which makes it very involving into a film. And these are things that filmmakers in weddings never thought about. Now, because mm -hmm. I worked in Bollywood and because of advertising, we have exaggerated sound effects, and sound is a very big part of making you feel something when you watch an ad. Um, you know, the way the car sounds, the roar of the engine, yeah. or the way the, the, yeah. the crackle cracks um, when, the, when you break the biscuit. We pay a lot of attention to, to detail of sound. So suddenly, when you shoot weddings, we also add that same amount of detail, obviously, a little subtly, um, for the same added effect to make it more human. So I think understanding sound and taking sound into consideration, paying attention to sound design and listening to sound engineers talk about their process would help you generate a certain level of interest in what you're doing, at least. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Color correction is very different for video. 
the limitations on video are very different from the limitations you have in a picture. Um, mm. So understanding the limitations you have, shooting with ND filters, why do we shoot with ND filters when we shoot at films and photographers don't? Um, mm. In general, most photographers will just crush, crush their shutter and take the picture. But in film, we don't have that added advantage. Mm. So understanding why people shoot with ND filters and what do they do? How do they enhance <coughs> your image? I can give you a 10 minute talk on ND filters, but then there are people out there on the internet who can teach you much better. Um, and who can tell you much better. What happened? So things like this really help when you have, um, when, when, when you're starting to become a filmmaker. Mm. And then understanding the user interface of editing softwares. Mm. Start small if you have to. Mm. Most computers and iPads and phones can edit video using iMovie. Mm. Um, so start small um, and then move up from there because editing will teach you the process of storytelling. How will you begin? Why are you going to the middle? In the beginning, you may feel like your films are too amateurish and they don't look good. Mm. That doesn't mean you don't give up. That means you work harder or you work with somebody who can teach you more about cinematography. You work with somebody who can teach you more about editing. Um, read as much as you can in this time so that you can absorb that much to make your film that you want to make. Nice. Nice. But I think the most important thing which people forget when they're making a film is what is the purpose of the film? What does that story going to tell? What is that one unique factor about their film that is going to make somebody watch it? Mm. It needs that. Every film or every story should have that. It should have a beginning, it should have a middle, and it should have an end. Nice. And so should your, so should your picture, mm. um, the, the shot you take, not just your film, but even the shot you take. Every shot has a beginning, mm. a middle, and an end. And I think understanding this um, is the main difference between photography and videography. Because photography, okay. mm. everything is there for you to see. Yeah. All your flaws, all your mistakes, all your beauty, all your perfection, it's all there in that one picture. Yeah. But in a video, um, it's not. You can hide. You can cheat. Uh, we talked about this once. You can focus and I can defocus someone's face away mm. and hide that beauty. And it's still art. And it's mm. still, so the beginning and the middle and the end is suddenly created again. Mm. Um, I can move my camera from one mm. person to another, something I can't do in photography. Mm. Um, and these are very powerful tools. If you can move your camera, how you use that to tell a language and how do you use that to tell a story? Um, mm. They are a million in one ways. And at a wedding, you've got fireworks, you've got lengas, you've got rose petals, you've got haldi, you've got mehendi, you've got faces, you've got spinning girls, you've got dancing girls, you've got dancing boys, you've got barats, you've got horses, you've got smoke bombs, you, you, you name it, you have it. It's like you've got all the action you want for, comfort, for, camera, for camera satisfaction. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That's a, that's a lot of information. Uh, I hope people are taking notes because that was like a like a listed answer uh, okay there's something that came up while you were talking uh, in the screen behind you and this leads uh -huh. me on to the only the second the only the second question i have uh, mm -hmm. i think a snippet of heartbeats played on that screen okay mm -hmm. and uh, i don't know if, i think there are about 400 people who have uh, signed in right now i'm sure everyone here has seen it uh, it was what in... you, how do you know there are 400 people how how do you tell baba the youtube pe hai yahan pe so log hai to you okay. add the numbers aa jayega <laughs> so anyway dude so i remember this was the uh, it was 2012 uh, december mm. 2012 when you guys uh, uh, forgive me for being brutally candid right but you guys shared this film on social media and you literally changed an industry overnight i know boman is going to hate this word uh, but you literally changed the wedding film industry overnight. Uh, and I know this because we were making wedding films then. Uh, there was suddenly this, this constant, I think, desire for this is how a wedding film should look like. The paradigm of wedding films changed overnight. Okay. Uh, so I just, my question is very clear cut. How was life after Heart? Like the next six months? I really want to know. Because that, that film, I think, if I remember correct, and you can correct me. I think there were about 200,000 odd shares on Facebook uh, in the first month or something like that. So how was life after Heartbeats? Because this is not so, a celebrity. Yeah, uh, no, I didn't, really com yeah. I didn't really comprehend what happened with Heartbeats. People thought, I think in the beginning, the trailer was made in such a way where people thought it was an actual movie coming out. Um, <laughs> so I sent it to film festivals and a few film festivals picked it up because Indian documentary made a 20 minute cut and it won a whole bunch of awards. Indian documentary, life in a film, life. It's like Bollywood, but real life. And they have a love story <laughs> and they were crying and the mother. And I don't <laughs> think visuals like that had been seen before. There was slow motion. And then I made music for the film for the first time. I made original music. And that song went viral in the biggest way possible. And people yeah. really genuinely yeah. thought it's a movie. Yeah. So I think based on that movie success, it became it became really popular. The, the bride and groom became celebrities overnight because they were stopped at airports and bars. Um, and I think that was the first time a video 
um, I saw a video that I had created ever go viral in such a big way. I didn't see it coming. I didn't understand. I was very overwhelmed. Very quickly, we didn't know how, how to respond to so many people. I had to reconfigure my whole business literally overnight because we, until then it was a, it, I showed you my studio. It was a desk yeah. in my bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. From there, I had to I had to figure out how to move out of my home because my home was full of people. I had assistants reply, replying, responding to emails and Facebook messages. And <clears throat> they were coming in by the hundreds. Yeah. Um, and managing that itself, because I also knew then, and I also had a, a whole bunch of people who wanted to figure out what camera are you using? What is this? What is this? We also want to do this. So, and we also understood very quickly that's a resource. People and humans um, are what it takes to make films and we need them. So having to, having to respond to each one, figure out, and then again, try and figure out how to turn this to our advantage again. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and very patiently and calmly without it letting it get to our head. Um, mm. How do we make and create a business that is sustainable? Because sustainable is the, we have grown leaps and bounds over 10 years. Um, mm. Our films more or less still cost the same. Um, our crew is still more or less the same, but I feel like our work has improved categorically consistently over the years. And, and that is that I feel is commendable, not to me, but to the crew I work with. Can, can I just interject here for a second, sure. Joseph? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Vishal, see now, this is very interesting because I thought I'll just bring about the behind the scenes about Heartbeat. Yes. Uh, yes. Ha, huh, you were there as a photographer on that film. No, your correction, son, correction, mama, mama. correction. Yes, so I was the mama, right? So it's my yeah, it's my nephew's wedding. And uh, so I can now claim to say that I saw history in the making at that time. Uh, Vishal wasn't very happy with me at that time because I was like, okay, I'm the mama. I want to take pictures of my nephew. Who is this? Who is this mosquito and, and coming said, yeah, yeah, my yeah, And I told my yeah, nephew. Nah, nah, machar, machar, kuch nahi bola tha. But I told my nephew, I said, she, I'll take pictures only if, you know, there's not <laughs> people coming into my frame. She said, no, no, mama, you take pictures and I'll make sure the video crew, uh, you know, won't bother you. And I do remember that, you know, uh, the amount of effort these guys, they came with a ton, ton of equipment and, uh, you know, uh, retrospectively every possible trolley and, you know, uh, I think he was experimenting with all the equipment that he had. He had this big rig, uh, which finally, you know, I think it was a Merlin with the rig. Yeah, the body and, rig yeah. and then finally, of course, chucked the, the rig away in the years to come. So, uh, I mean, I think I was privileged to see them at work there and uh, my apologies for having come into your frame many times. And uh, yeah, Vishal does joke about it that, you know, I showed you a shot at that time, see what I've done. And I just went, hmm. I don't believe that's true. But, uh, <laughs> but it was lovely to see them work and Hojo and Vishal. And uh, I think it was all heart over there. And I think Heartbeat is a very apt title to that video because I think the heart was behind the camera also. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, after that, everybody knows uh, uh, what they did with the company and what Vishal single-handedly did with the whole industry of wedding, uh, wedding films and brought it to a status which, you know, is there for everyone to emulate, I would say, nowadays. And uh, having even, you know, dabbled with him for a few years shooting, I think the passion uh, is what he's carried forward and uh, it's there and it's, it's, it's for everyone to see in each of his films. And uh, even working with him, I think the, uh, for me, I think the only thing I, I take back, uh, even for the few years that we shot together, is uh, the immense respect uh, that he gave me. And uh, for me, I think that was the one thing that, you know, the, the ability to, to, um, to kind of gel with another creative person in a way that you leave the person to do what they, they're best at doing. And then he finally comes in as master of ceremonies and puts all of that together. And I think that freedom creative that he- freedom. Creative freedom to the- to Which we both give each other. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I, but I think respect. I think you- I Get a not, room, not, guys. Sorry? <laughs> no, no, nothing. <laughs> but man. Uh, so, anyhow, so I'm just saying that. No, we had our ups and downs. I'm not talking about the downs, but the ups are definitely, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, he deserves every bit of uh, uh, the recognition and the, the uh, the applause that he gets oh, sure. everywhere he goes. Yeah. Uh, so sweet. Thank you, Sarban. Thank you. Now my head is okay, quick question. Okay. No, uh, that's what Go ahead. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the, the thing I'd like to ask you is that you, you ask the client as to what kind of film he, he'd like to see um, mm -hmm. made. Would he like to see it as a, as a Filmfare Awards function um, or, or, or a story in itself? And there are four or five different options that you gave the client. What do you think is the best way uh, if the client doesn't know better? What would you 
say this Makes is the sense. way to go. I feel a lot has to do with the with with, with how deep your pockets are um, when it comes to filmmaking. I think um, it's like buying, it's like decorating a home. You know, the more money you spend, the nicer your home is. Or it's like like you creating th- a meal. The, sorry, I don't quite agree. But 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 you don't agree. Me, I mean, yeah, to, agree, I mean to some uh, true. I'm saying if it's, it's an it's, average pocket, it's an average yeah, pocket. Uh, an average pocket, I feel like twenty. I feel like a twenty-minute film, and again, depending on how long, because no two weddings are, are are the same in terms of how many days people get married over. And in, unlike, unlike westernized weddings where everything happens over a day, and it's very standard. In the morning, the bride gets ready, they have a wedding, and then the night they have a reception party, and it's done. Um, but in India, it could be two days, it could be three days, it could be four days. I have done a ten-day wedding before. Um, the maximum number of days I've shot for a wedding was thirty-two days, um, one wedding. Those of you remember. Yes. So, 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 so now each one would be very different. But I think a standardized, if I say a one day wedding, I get a lot of brides who really want a wedding video by us because she feels like, okay, if you give me something worth 20 minutes also, it's still better than something else um, that someone will give me over an hour. So time, I think, def- defines the kind of wedding film you will have, how long your film will be. Is it five minutes, 10 minutes or 20 minutes or an hour long documentary? Now, each one will have different storytelling skills told into them. Um, a five-minute documentary, um, a five-minute short film on someone's wedding will be very different from um, a one-hour film. How it begins, um, how in-depth you tell your story, how much of an event you expose, where your, high point, where your high points of each event would come. In a five-minute video, for example, your high point of your video would be at the wedding towards the end. But in a, twin, in a, in a one-hour video, um, each scene would have different high points. Um, and therefore defining how long it would take to create each high point in your film. Um, like act one, act two, act three, and each act would have a pre-climax in each act. So, so each scene would, would go in differently. And I think that defines how expensive a film would be. Um, but I do believe that making a film um, is like, a, is also, you could term it like a vacation. How much money you spend would define um, how well you travel. Um, how 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 nicely you stay, the kind of food you eat, and what you get to experience at the certain country you go and visit. Um, if you don't have that much money, you'll still have a great time, no doubt. Um, and it's a very different experience. Um, backpacking and, and luxury travel are very different. But now you get the kind of sense of how a film would be treated. You want a certain kind of beauty with the certain kind of nice lenses with cinematographers who've been working for years. Like someone like, if I want to get someone like one day, for example, um, the dream would be to get Meads, Hojo, Swapan, Joseph, and these amazing people to say, come, let's go and try shooting this one beautiful wedding film. But now the, to, to pay these cinematographers over 10 days uh, for a 10-day wedding is expensive. Um, and okay. talent comes, talent point. comes. So, you know, talent comes expensive. But if you're having it over one day, Sopan and Joseph will be like, yeah, of course we'll do it for a day. Why not? Come, let's go. And it's not that expensive to do it in one day. Uh, you can manage to try and crunch it in. Um, sure. And therefore, defining how cool your, your film will be, how much talent goes into it, who will edit your film, who will do music for your film, how much time can you spend color correcting it, will then decide how beautiful your film turns out eventually. What, what I'd like to... Thank you so much. That was a superb answer. And, and I tend to agree with you about the money aspect now, now that you've clarified that. Um, I, I'd like to say something uh, that, you know, all the gentlemen that have come on to this platform and spoken... There's one thing that is uh, unique about each and every one of them, and that is that each and every one of them are unique. And in many ways, they are trailblazers. I remember you so well uh, at, uh, what was it, Bagdogra Airport? Uh, you know, Bagdogra. Bagdogra Mehuna, St. Paul's School. St. Paul's School. Uh, and uh, the thing that struck me most, and, and at that point of time, I didn't know whether you were a filmmaker, but you, you, you were an assistant, actually, to Farah Khan yes. that time, if I remember right. And the yes. thing that struck me most, and you can see, you can see potential in a person or the way he speaks to somebody or takes care of people. And I think that is one more great lesson to learn, not just about the techniques of photography and the techniques of how to make good pictures and good images, is how you conduct yourself. And that's a lesson that all the youngsters out there have to learn, that you could be True. fabulous as a photographer, but if you don't conduct yourself in a particular manner, especially at a wedding, you're not going to get good pictures. And this, and this comes with you... experience. You know, this comes with yeah. understanding and learning. I feel like when I came to India, I was a very shy boy. Talking in public, I, if anybody remembers my first ever workshop I did in Bombay, it was at NCPA. In you're still very shy. You don't even look into the camera just by the way. You're still very I, you're shy. I'm still very, still very <laughs> shy. And I, I used to shake. My voice used to vibrate when I used to talk in front of camera. And 
I used to I used to shake like a shrimp when Shahrukh used to call me because I used to look up to him and it's like oh my God Shahrukh and Farah used to beat me with the microphone all over the set and I think with with <laughs> learning and observing the people you, you you respect and you love and who've given you all of these opportunities over time, um, you then um, you then start emulating them in a certain way and you start absorbing the best from them. So that I, I think and that's not the, what I'm I, saying. I was I'm not talking about no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying how you conducted yourself in front of Shah Rukh and Farah Khan. No, it is it's, it's something single, I learned from there. From yeah, okay. That every single crew member, you went around asking everybody if they were taken care of, and you know this is the amount of time we'll be waiting at the airport, and the cars will be there. Uh, that also adds to success. It's one of the laws of success, and each and every one of you, the uh, come and including yourself. In in no small measure, uh, uh, are so 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 wonderfully detailed in your in your behavior, and to me that's a big plus point. I think that should not go unnoticed you. to the youngsters who are out there. Absolutely. Really, I say this from the heart. Mum would be very happy if she heard that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did well. Okay, uh, Vishal. Um, there's, there's there's been a couple of questions on uh, on email where people have asked on. Uh, uh, using soundtracks, I, I'm, yes. I know you've answered it in a lot of your workshops, but still people mm -hmm. are abruptly picking up soundtracks and using in trailers to look like the wedding film or films. So, what 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 would you advise these people, and how should they go about it? So, what I did, and this is something I realized early on, is that if I want to be a true independent filmmaker and I want my films to go to film festivals, I can't use um, "Mujhse Shadi Karogi" as a background song. Um, Neither can I use the next Bollywood or the next Ed Sheeran song um, for a first dance. I'll have to use something that is original because that's the only thing that's going to be accepted. Because the law is, and it's a it's a good law and it's a true law that you shouldn't be um, using music commercially for your benefit. Um, so if you can then create music, um, nothing like it. Not everybody is blessed to have um, the either the talent or the access to talent that I have. Um, so what you end up doing then is instead of there are lots of ways of going around it. You can use uncopyrighted tracks. Um, you can ask permission. There are lots of times where I've asked permission from artists and they have given me the permission to use their tracks because they've liked the work that we've done um, and they feel like they'll get exposure from it. So there's no harm in, in reaching out and trying to ask for it. Or then registering yourself with a, with a music distributor like Sony Music or Savan and trying to gain access to the copyright pool that they have. Um, but I think at the end of the day, to respect the fact that your films will either be blocked or your films will either be charged or monetized um, if you don't use original music in your film. Um, there is no shortcut. Like I was saying, it is hard work to make a film. It's not easy. And making music and paying attention to music is that is that hard. It's I mean, it's like music to a film is like the album is to a photograph. Um, um, you need it. It's, 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 as, it's as important. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, can I move on to some questions from the participants? Uh, yes, please. Raghav, are you on call right now? Raghav Pasricha? Yep, I'm on uh, call. I'm yeah, on. Raghav, why don't you ask your question yourself so that uh, we can, I mean, I don't need to uh, paraphrase your question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Raghav. Sure. Hi, Vishal. Thanks for the talk. Um, hi, Raghav. Hi. hi. Uh, let me just pull my question up for a second. I wrote it out. Given how often... Um, your work gets copied and albeit badly. Uh, do plagiarism concerns stop you from sharing your work publicly at times? And no. what advice would what advice would you have for people starting out to find their voice without blind aping? Because I do find very often that people quite liberally try and replicate something that's not theirs without any you know understanding of copyright at all. And uh... okay, so to answer your first question is, um, would it stop me from putting up work online? I believe no, it doesn't. Um, that is not the primary reason for us to not put up everything we do. I think the reason I don't put up everything we do, and this is a very important factor, is maintaining the privacy of the people in the film if they so choose to keep it so. The world is filled with different types of people. Some like their films to be displayed online at the earliest. Some would like to hold on for the right moment. And some would not like to have it exposed at all. And I think as, as somebody who's shooting something so intimate, it's up, we leave the decision always to the client to decide whether they'd like to put up or not. Um, in regards to plagiarizing, I feel like that inspiration is one thing. 
um, and it's 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 okay to be inspired. Music, all my music is inspired. Nothing is, I don't think anything is truly truly original. Everything is inspired, is inspired from somewhere or the other. Um, but I think blatant copyright theft um, is is horrible. Um, it, it it demotivates you from doing what you want to do. In but I mean, at the end of the day, you have to pick your battles. I can't go around suing everybody. I, everybody who copies me now, some you know, Brijesh Mohan sitting in Ludhiana, who is working for Mohanlal Photo Studio, who tries to cut something, <laughs> is not really going. Is he's not really going to affect me in any way? I would like to help him in in the way where I would be able to teach him and guide him and and give him the ability to find his own voice. Finding your own voice now, um, that's the trick. Um, it's about what excites you. It's about introspection, um, understanding how you would like to see things. If this was yours, I treat each wedding film like it were my own. Um, even if that person is not from my culture, and even if that person is not from my understanding or my belief system, doesn't mean that I can't empathize and comprehend how he feels or how she feels. So a father who is very religious and who understands God, I treat that person like I would my mother. I'm not religious, but my mother is um, fiercely um, so to respect her religion and to understand how it gives her peace and how it gives her happiness, um, put that and translate that into the film and how I bring that aspect onto my film would be something that I would use. Now, somebody else doing so would be very different. I, I saw a film which a filmmaker in Coimbatore had made. Um, he was all of 19. And I think, I don't know him. I, I, don't, I, I couldn't find, I didn't know where he did it or whether it was his company or he was working for someone. But or he was because it seemed to me he was a family member. It was so intimate. He shot the grandmother frying these pakoras in the morning, and he shot he shot this uh, he shot the bride combing her hair um, in the mirror from outside the window. And at the background, the grandmother was singing a song, and he used that song in 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 the visual, and then it translated to a singer singing it beautifully. And it was so beautifully done and so real and so intimate. It was something that I could never create because I didn't have that access. I don't have that understanding of that culture. I didn't know what was important to that bride or not. But for her, it must have been, the grandmother must have been the world to her. So obviously this boy understood that the grandmother was important to her and hence featured her in the beginning of the film. And that I found really beautiful. And then it also taught me that I'm not the only person who can do this. Everybody around is in some way or the other, a storyteller, a filmmaker, um, it's about how much you want to do it and how, how, how badly you want to succeed at it. Um, and then you have to give it time. It's like playing the guitar. It's, I was talking to Neha, my producer, who's trying to play the guitar right now. And she's like, I can't practice. It's really hard. I have to look at the chords every time. And I'm like, in time, you will come to you. It will come naturally to you, the, the change in chord. You have to just keep practicing. Um, and your muscles will learn it. And filmmaking becomes like that. You keep learning. Now, over 10 years, you can imagine how much the power of anticipation comes to us with each wedding we do. And I think by, by the 350th wedding we've done now, um, it comes even stronger. So, yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, I, my next question to you, uh, one second. I, I, I lost it. Wait, wait. Okay. Huh. Uh, uh, so a lot of questions are coming in Vishal regarding music for your wedding films. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, whether firstly, the weather, the music you make for your trailer, uh, is it, is it also the same one used for the uh, full film? And if not, uh, what kind of music is used for it? The other question is, uh, how do you suggest the kind of music that uh, they choose uh, if, if the clients put the choice on them entirely? And finally, do you write songs for your wedding films? These are questions from Vidhi Sharma, Angad Divakar and Dev Udasi. On to you now. All lovely. So music, like I talked about earlier, is 50% of your film. Mm -hmm. um, without the music and Indian weddings are so musical. So how I decide what music to use in my film. A, what played? When the bride was getting ready, what was playing? Somebody would have been playing something on the phone or on a speaker. 90% of the time it's happening. Um, what played at the Bharat? What instruments were there? What kind of Sangeet was it? Was it Bollywood? Was it English? Was it Hollywood? The after party that the DJ danced to like techno, to jazz, to hip hop, to... Um, we've seen all kinds, haven't we, Joseph? Mm. Um, and then we talk about music composition um what kind of music do people um like what 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 do you like what is the pace of the song what is the mood of the song now each song comes with a pace with a tempo with a mood with a certain instrumentation and a certain mix some songs when you listen to and you close your eyes you picture your outdoors some 
close your eyes and you picture your indoors. Some you close your eyes, the lyrics guide you to say, Ye raat bigi bigi. Means what love? You can't use that in the, in, in the day, can you? It will be in the night. So some songs define whether they're going to be used in the day or the night. Language and culture plays a huge role in the kind of music you play. Mm-hmm. Are they Gujarati? Are they, Maru, are they Marwadi? Um, is it happening in Udaipur or Jodhpur or is it happening in Switzerland? Now I'm not going to use Kesariya Balam Padharo. So this they'll use if I'm shooting in Jodhpur, but if I'm in Switzerland, I'm going to use something else. And I think with each um, with each film, these factors are taken into consideration before choosing the music I choose. Yes, I do write for for I do write lyrics for for the music. Yes, I do create background scores for the films I make. Yes, I do write lyrics for the films we do, and I think that's what makes it a film. Um, mm. To be able to compose and create something nice. original with Super. the visuals that are original. Super. Uh, Vidhi, do you have anything to add? Mm, I... No, I'm satisfied by this answer. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Vidhi, for joining in. Uh, I have next up is Khalid Rehman. Uh, he has a, a very good question. I think which a lot of us as wedding uh, wedding service providers deal with. Uh, he says he's a new wedding filmmaker from Bangladesh. His question to you is: How do you come up with great stories in rush events? Because in those moments, we usually get busy to take a safe shot rather than taking extraordinary shots to meet client requirements. That's Khalid's question. How do you handle rush and the? That is why I said in the beginning itself, you need three people to shoot a wedding, <laughs> not one. It's very difficult because if you want to get intimate and you want to tell stories, hmm. um, I'll give you an example. Uh, hmm. A bride and groom are telling the story of how they met. So. Hmm. Um, I was driving my car and I had a flat tire and I was stuck and it's in Dubai and it's in the middle of the road and I didn't know what to do and I thought I was going to die. Mm. And then suddenly this Ferrari stops behind my car and he gets off my and he gets off his car and he says, "Ma'am, can I help you change your tire?" And then he changed my life. Mm. Correct. Now I'm shooting the film. Now I see the barat and I see a Ferrari coming. And the groom is sitting on a Ferrari and coming in. Now I'm going to use that Ferrari to tell my story. So I need the time to shoot the tire. I need the time to shoot the door opening. I need the time to shoot the Ferrari and the horse. All this, you know. But now I don't want to just put my camera and shoot it. I want to shoot it like a movie. So we have to like low angle and adjust. Now if I'm doing all this low angle and somebody is dancing and the mum is like crying and she's hugging, I miss all of that, right? Yeah. So that's where I have Hojo is shooting that for me to make sure that he doesn't like miss. The moment yeah. while I do this, or vice versa, I go and shoot the mother crying, and he shoots the. Today, Vishal, I'm feeling very cinematic. I want to shoot the car, so I'm like, okay, today you shoot the car. Today I'll shoot the bride, and then one day you'll be like, no, no, the bride is mine. She's too pretty. I want to shoot her. And I'm like, okay, you shoot the bride. So that's how it. That's how it basically works. Lovely, uh, Amit Asher, sir, you have a question. I want to cut to you. Hi, hi, Vishal. I want to start hi. with uh, first. It's amazing the sensibility that you brought into uh, the area of uh, filming weddings. How sweet! It's beautiful. The sensibility is what is totally making it. The technique, technology, a lot of people can use, but it's the understanding and the sensibility that you bring in is amazing. Now, uh, my question to you is that a little while back you mentioned your mother asking a videographer, uh, "I want to see everybody." Huh. <laughs> How do you respond to a question like that, uh, 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 a need like that from someone? I so I do, I do explain to people that it's not possible to tell and it's not possible to show everybody. Unlike my my sister's videographer who was like, ha ha, no problem, madam. Being honest with your client and telling them, I think, and delivering to them what you can and can't do. Now, the films that we make is not conducive for coverage. They're specific from a point of view, very specific from not my point of view, I'd like to say our point of view. Um, from the point of view of this wedding filming company that is coming in to capture life at its best for you. Um, now, the people who are going to be close to you, who are going to be involved in the wedding, obviously, we're going to shoot them. It is our job and our duty to know who is important and to make sure that we identify them. We are aware of their presence at each event. And we are also um, observant of their emotions and their needs at each time. Once we have that covered, um, then I think everything else that happens is a bonus. We do explain to them that if people don't participate in the actual event, our cameras are going to be around the bride and groom, but obviously it's their wedding. Um, 
And if anybody else would like to be featured, then I suggest that they participate in the event so that they get to be featured. But I think in an event where you've got 1,000 people or 2,000 people or 10,000 people, it is virtually impossible to tell a bride and groom um, that we will feature everyone in your film. It is important to get to know who is important in the film, um, know who is important to the bride and groom. And this is our job to know this. Um, we have to know this. It's the first thing I enter a set and in case I've not met the family and I've only met the bride and groom before, my first question to Niha is always, who's the mom, who's the dad? And one by one, she'll introduce me to everybody. So I meet everybody in the family and I know the cousins. And then you, then you, then you, then it's up to how they feel about you and how you feel about them and whether you can get close to them, get to know them, uh, mingle with them, chat with them, get them to open up and become their friend. Wonderful. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to take over again. I have three questions, very similar. I already know your answer, Vishal, but I'm going <laughs> to ask you anyway, because you're going to laugh at this one. Okay, so Mehul Joshi, Hardik Valambia and Devansh Javari have asked very similar questions. Mehul has asked, do you interrupt the ceremony if you want or feel it could be better? Uh, no. Or Yeah, I know, I know. But Rapid wait, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. You got to listen to all of this. Uh, I mean, in terms of light you're getting or the view or something, or you never disturb the ritual, like pundits, parents, guests. Do you ask the crowd to show energy <laughs> or shout or something if the things are going very slow? That's what Mehul asks. Hardik Valambi asks, what are your instructions for your bride, groom and clients? And Devansh Javari asks, how much friction do you need to introduce in an average couple story when there is nothing dramatic or spectacular? So would you be okay with cheating uh, the audience? Yes. No, now, a, a, no. I, I don't think there's nothing dramatic or spectacular. I think every love story is very simple. Um, it doesn't have to be spectacular. In fact, the spectacle of a wedding is what puts me off weddings. I'm, I'm not into the ones where there are big flags and, you know, Aziz Oshan, Shahin Shah and their soldiers and that's a war cry. Um, I'm, I'm more into the intimate garden, beautiful Joseph Radik type wedding. Um, which is which is more um, which is more me, I would like to believe. Um, but then adding drama and, and, and all of that doesn't then become your memory. It becomes it becomes it becomes your memory. It doesn't become their memory, and you don't want that to happen. Um, so no, you don't want to do that. Um, what was the earlier question? Is you definitely don't want to interrupt us an event for your benefit. That's why three cinematographers. So in case you're not prepared, um, in case you're not ready, somebody else is. Um, and you have that person to depend on um, because these moments don't come again. If it was all, if that was the case, then I just have one cinematographer. I wouldn't have so many. Um, so that is important to know. Yeah, uh, I'm actually going to ask Priyansh Jain to come online. Uh, he has a wonderful question about empathy, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I really do want him to ask it himself. Priyansh, are you yes. here? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Vishal. There you are. Hi, yeah. hi, Priyansh. How's it going? Yeah, I'm good. So my question is that, you know, um, now that technology is taking over, so we have to have empathy in our work, uh, not just only in the videography, in the, in the terms of photography as well, and over whichever the work in the terms of, uh, you know, visual media we are doing. So how much right. important is it to have empathy in our films? And when we talk, obviously there is empathy in weddings, but how, it, how do we bring it to the final output so that it affects the people when they see it? Sorry, real... Define empathy. When you say empathy, what do you mean by it? Um, you know, the same way how a bride is looking, a groom is looking at the films, how do we present it that way to the camera, you know, to the audience? Because it, uh, that's, that's the big difference about empathy. It's not about how you look, it's about how you feel. How you feel it, exactly. Um, I mean, and and that they... word would make... Yeah, so I think entering a wedding and understanding that culture, um, understanding how a bride would feel, understanding how a groom would feel, and are you capable of feeling that? Or are you a stone inside? Yeah. Um, do you understand how insecure or how difficult it must have been to arrive at this decision or how easy it must have been yeah. um, to arrive at that decision. Were they having an arranged marriage or were they having a love marriage? Um, these two things, we have this benefit in India. Very few countries have this, but these two things would define whether your film is going to be told from the point of view of the bride and groom or your film is going to be told by the parents. Because in an arranged marriage, chances are the parents were the ones who instigated this whole thing. It's their dream, it's their want, it's their desire. They have thrown this big wedding. Most of the guests are theirs. If it's a bride and groom who fallen in love, chances are, um, these, these are not rules per se, but chances are um, the bride and groom um, are very much in love and their friends are all around them and they were, in, they were very centric to their love story. And the point of view of the film, the treatment of the film, the language of the film, the music of the film, um, yeah. Even the colors and the treatment and the way it's shot would then be different. So I think empathy towards your story um, and empathy towards your bride and groom and understanding um, why they are doing what they're doing. Are they doing it for 
the 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 display of wealth are they doing it for the for the love of it are they doing it for a deep dark fetish that they have are they doing it for a certain love of of of, of cinema what is what is the purpose yeah. um and that purpose would give you clarity is it also caters to you how you uh, how home you choose to film also depending on uh, what story they have it behind not i don't think it depends so much on the story they have because i think every story is beautiful in that sense it's very, i don't think i've come across a love story and said i don't like this love story yeah it's absurd it's it's one of those st- stories that two people fall in love how did that happen it's always interesting who no. hit on who first who is loved it, who first is it inquiries for a wedding so how do you choose one uh the budget is a good factor <laughs> um the availability is another yeah. um and obviously location have we traveled to that place before haven't we do we have a crew available um what kind of story is it does play a factor because that will also determine on how long it would take to tell that story and whether we are well equipped to tell that story um and whether we have an option to look for another story that we like and i think storytelling is what we are looking for all the time i'm constantly in the look for a beautiful wedding story to tell thank you uh, i'm going to move on to gaurav haryani's question i really like his question because it's something that i think we all wonder gaurav are you here if not i can ask the question on your behalf i think uh, yes said... i'm ready okay go ahead yeah okay so basically i'm from us say by the way uh i'm trying to ask a question uh, i have two questions first is like the same day edits which we do uh, I, i don't know if you guys do same day edits and if you do how how does it work with because i'm because there's two different uh, type of uh, same day edits you know sometimes it's more from the point of view from the family members you know because a lot of people want documentary same day edits and some people Stop. want like a film making and it's very hard for us to put together in matter of fact in some couple of days so how do you do it how how what is the team work it is difficult yes so my team work is basically we have an editor on set we have somebody who manages our data on set and i think defining a site on on site edit i am not so much for it because i feel like it takes away from the magic of what we do time and time obviously allows for films to be made better the more time you give something the more better than more more fruitful your creative process would be if you do all of this um within a day or within a couple of days obviously it's going to suffer creatively but if you go in with a certain kind of plan plan within a certain stage know how your film is going to be know how it's going to sound for example i just recently shot a wedding in jodhpur where we did a kind of same day edit for them the next day we gave her a film um but basically i went in there with i knew the kind of song i was going to use i knew the music i was going to have the bride sang it before her wedding for me i knew um the location really well so i knew how i was going to start it i knew how i was going to end it i just needed to know um my story and the time of, of, of how long it's going to tell it's going to take for me to tell that story um and that was decided when i went on set i have my editor and with a lot of clarity is required when you're shooting and you're creating on site edits i don't think you should go in on an on site edit saying dekha jayega or which means we will figure it out as we go along i think going in with a plan will really help you because you will get that satisfaction of creating something from beginning to end which is more or less close to your vision um that i find more satisfaction okay one one more question uh because uh the question is uh give me one second let me pull up the question quick sorry guys gorabi your question was originally about style so yeah oh yeah so basically that's the question i'm re- relating right now so the basically i've been looking at your stories and uh, highlights and trailers so from my from your point of view i see like every year you been changing your style so how do you maintain and keep up the same style or you change up the style like what's the new trend do you, you go with i don't the think trend? it's a trend i think with, you evolve uh, i think you evolve over time music you know when we were younger we don't listen to jazz the older you get the more you listen to jazz the younger you are you don't like whiskey the older you are you start liking whiskey um i think with time your films the films you make the 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 music you listen to the stories you tell and the way you tell these stories evolve um technology evolves um cameras have gotten smaller better cooler more stabilized um lenses have gotten faster cleaner better more focused so using these tools obviously our films will evolve too and we will try and get better at what we do and that is part of the reason we are successful is we constantly keep evolving and we constantly keep reinventing our style 
we can't const- we can't make the same music over and over again you made it once now you create something new and you look for something new to challenge you um that's the process okay thank you so uh, much guys yeah uh, vishal i'm going to take your leave now devang is going to continue the rest of the conversation uh, devang good. over to you yeah yeah Vishal, uh, there's a question yes. from another Vishal. Joseph was trying to avoid it. He's asking Vishal, why didn't you shoot Joseph's wedding? Vishal, why didn't I shoot Joseph's wedding? I don't know. Joseph didn't call me. I, I didn't even know he was getting married. I found out on Facebook he got married. When he oh, got married oh, on Instagram. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. I, I you got married in Punjab? No, I got married in Lucknow firstly. It was Lucknow, Devika's see. wedding. Um, hi, hi. Devika's wedding. Achha, not your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Damn it. I'm gonna. No, no, I would have happily shot his wedding. No, also we we did the big mistake, Vishal, of getting married in the middle of the wedding season. Uh, literally then, Feb 16th, 17th. I think pretty much oh, everyone who are friends in the wedding industry did not end up at our wedding. Uh, hey, like yo. even Vandana <laughs> didn't make it for our wedding. That's like there that's as bizarre as it gets. So <laughs> that's. But we did want to get married in winter in Lucknow. So that was the sad compromise we had to do. But it happened. Yes. It was beautiful either way. Thank you. And he and for, for the record, Vishal has seen my wedding film uh, as recently as last month. Uh, so, yes, I did. <laughs> and and he liked it, so at least I'm happy. I did. That. It was lovely. <laughs> If I may. It was real. Time. Yes, that was the idea. Okay, I'm off to you guys. Uh, Devang, all thanks, yours. Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. So, Vishal, the next question is uh, by Rico from Singapore. Yes. Uh, I am a videographer and photographer for weddings as well. Here in Singapore, most of my clients want full videos mm-hmm. and a next day wedding highlights to project during the reception. Yes. I understand from your website that you don't do next day projection of the highlights, and why is that? I mean, it's not that I don't do them. We do do them for certain select company for certain select brides and grooms if we feel like it's conducive, the budgets allow us to, and we have a crew available to do so. But having said that um i think it takes away from the magic of what we create i like it when the memories fade i like giving them the film a few months after i've sat on it composed music for it worked on it color corrected it done the sound perfectly these processes take time they don't happen overnight um and i like to go through that process before i show the client um their final project i feel like these films are for life they're not for a few days or they're not going to last you um you don't want to watch it once and you're going to put it away you want to watch it very often i have a bride who watches a film every morning she has a cup of tea and she sits and watches her trailer every single morning and every morning she'll text me and say today i saw this today i saw that so what i try and do is i layer the films in in so many different ways so that every time they watch it they notice something new they feel something new they see something new because there's so much to to take in that it it's very overwhelming the first time they watch it they need to watch it again and again and again and again and, and then they start familiarizing then it becomes almost then they remember dialogues then they remember shots they remember music they remember the feeling again and it becomes that for them um seeing it one day after your wedding takes away from that magic um then there's the, the appreciation for it is short lived um so i do try and talk my brides and grooms away from it but i think some for some people who are having a small wedding and they're not having too many people coming for that wedding and they want to show people what their wedding was like for clients like that we we tend to do them it's easier because then it's a smaller wedding too so there's less of footage it's easier to cut it's faster to go through um also yeah. uh, devang i have a question yes devang this is fawzan hi oh, vishal sir hi go hi, ahead hi 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 sorry i got in late because i was shooting crawford market today Oh, how exciting uh, okay i wanted to ask you not at all <laughs> okay what i wanted to know is uh, in your team do you have people who have done stills and i'm now and then moved on to cinematography and do you see a edge in those people who have spent some time doing stills and now got in, into uh, cinematography in fact in the beginning itself of my career in the wedding film i very early on understood that some of the best cinematographers are photographers um mainly because people like swapan for example when i saw him shoot he shot an ad for vistara for me uh, till now i think it was one of the most visually stunning ads that i've ever shot from this, compared to all the big budget ads we've ever filmed also seeing the circumstances in which he shot them with 
understanding how um how he approached his cinema and his film was was amazing um to watch him and and that can only come from the voyeuristic photojournalistic approach from his photography hojo who has been working with me from day 1 from my first ever wedding i shot till now um he was he's been my main cinematographer he is the reason our films are so beautiful and he is a photographer he is not trained as a cinematographer he's trained as a he used to work with suresh natarajan for many many years yeah. um he worked with me in with on mehuna as well baman he was with us on on, on film uh, uh in mehuna and he did all the behind the scenes of of the stills of that film and they were stunning and since then since my first ever friend i made in bombay and since then i have been a big fan of his photography until he said vishal i want to shoot video with you and i said why don't you come and shoot video with me and he did and see what he's done so i constantly look for good photographers who want to convert their power of imagery into the moving image um there are pros and cons um a good photographer can earn a lot more money than a good cinematographer but the workload is a lot less um on a cinematographer when it comes to on set activity and post production activity as well the post process is very different for a cinematographer he just has to give sojo doesn't sit and edit the films he doesn't color correct the films he doesn't go through that whole process of sorting and all of that he just shoots and has a great time shooting and then gives me the footage so his life is also made easier he gets to do what he does best which is shoot video um and that kind of balances it out for us oh thanks <laughs> yes hello There we are. How are we doing? I'm sorry. There was a question from Praveen Khetan. Is Praveen on the call? Yes, I am. Okay. So Praveen wanted to ask, what is your state mm -hmm. of mind before shooting the wedding day, and how do you guide your team when it's a celebrity wedding? Do you feel pressure, or are you nervous, or are you very confident? Hello. thankfully i am confident now at what with what i'm doing and i'm not insecure at all about what i do so um that comes easy i think making yourself and being yourself is very important in front of a either celebrity or people who you are trying to impress trying to impress them doesn't mean that you should um become someone else or talk to them with an accent suddenly or behave in a way that would undermine them be natural if you look at the pickup art to cone for example and you think she's beautiful and you are enamored by her tell her that you are enamored by her um there's no harm in doing so there's no point in acting like you're cooler than her because that's not going to help in any way she knows that she's cooler than you um but i think being yourself and being honest with them about what you're capable of doing and what you're not capable of doing um and treating them like you would treat anybody else um should come naturally to you if you if you want to succeed and do what you want to do well without feeling the pressure um before i go to a wedding i try not to judge the couple um it's very important to be open minded um don't make them feel like you're observing them in a way that they shouldn't be observed and this is very important because i feel like a lot of people judge the people they shoot um including my own crew and i think the one thing i always request my crew is that even if you don't feel drawn towards the people you're filming don't try and you have to i look i always look for things that make me fall in love with the bride and groom even if they don't think the way i do um, there are certain there are certain there are certain things about each bride and each groom that you want to like really like and 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 latch on to and hold on to because that becomes the goodness in the film that they're going to in the story that you're going to tell so try not to look at them and judge them for ways that even if they are different from you um that is important yes next question Hello. Thanks, Vishal. Yeah, thanks, Praveen. Hello. Hope that answers your question. Uh, request to all the participants: please uh, keep your uh, audio on mute and video off. Okay. Yeah, Devan, uh, I just need to ask. Uh, I'm sorry, Vishal. There have been a lot of questions on YouTube and Zoom. People are asking. Uh, they've been asking you always on if somebody wants to be a part of the wedding film. How does that happen? Right. So, if somebody wants to be a part of the wedding film, I think you should take this very seriously. um i consider the wedding film to be one of the best companies in the in the world when it comes to shooting wedding videography so if you were to write to a company for a job i think writing to us with the correct criteria understanding a if there's a job opening 
um, by following our work constantly and understanding what we do. A lot of people write to us without understanding what what we do. So they think we do photography. Um, so they say, we, we, I'm a photographer, I would like to work with you. Um, and that's the message we get on Instagram or that's the email we get or that's the Facebook direct message we have. I feel like if you want to work with a company, any company, whether it's me, whether it's Joseph or anyone, I think it's important to write in correctly, write a cover letter, write your CV, um, explain to the company you're writing to what you can do to benefit them. Explain to them what you expect from them um, so that they can be in a position to help you out as well. Be very clear, um, have good grammar when you write, have clear understanding of, of your skill sets that are required when whether you have them to um, work with that company because I think it's a waste of your time and the company's time if you don't. Um, so understand if you don't and you would like to learn and you'd like to start from scratch, then there are ways of understanding how that process would be done and you have to present yourself in a way where you are not you, you don't you don't have the knowledge you want you want to learn so you have you're happy to make the sacrifices um, in starting a, a fresh career at a, at a much older age for example. Um, there are certain sacrifices you'll have to take financially, creatively and even career wise. Um, you have to take a few steps back to learn everything again. I think you have to accept that. Um, so these basics are important. Vinay, was that your personal question? Sorry? Uh, was, that, was that your personal question? Yeah, yeah. I've already applied three years ago. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there Shall is a... I? Yes. I wanted to ask a question. Yeah, sure. uh, yeah, how do you handle people, especially the extended, uh, you know, family, they come out with some, you know, demands, you want you to come and shoot them, you know, when you're in the middle of uh, doing something. Uh, so how do you handle people and the family, especially the extended family? I think respect for each other is critical. And I choose to work with people. And I think somebody asked me this question earlier, how do you define and how do you choose clients? Um, when they come to you. So the one thing I always do is I, I talk to and I ask certain questions to clients and I always meet them in a certain way, which allows me to judge them. And this is the only time I judge them. I also, I, it allows me to judge how much respect they have for the work that I do or my crew does. And if I sense that they don't value um, what we do, I try and tend not to do those weddings. Um, reason being um, that you're opening yourself up to putting yourself in a situation where you are uncomfortable about because the wedding, a wedding is about a bride and groom. It's not about everybody else. Yes, we do have to capture everyone around them. We do have to capture the mama when the chura is happening. We would want to capture the father and the mother when the kanyadan is happening. You do want to catch the cousins when they're dancing and practicing and doing their rehearsals. But um, I feel like a very thin line has to be drawn in how much influence people have on what we shoot and what we don't. Because we are very good at what we do, I like to have creative freedom in the weddings that I shoot. Hence, um, I would always request my brides and grooms and their parents and their families to give us that creative freedom when we are shooting so that we can do our best um, and give them a film that is worthy of our point of view of their wedding. And I think 90% of the time or 99% of the time it works. I can only remember two incidents in the past um, 10 years of working where I have felt disrespected and I felt anguish in my job. And I think each, each time it happened, I took it positively and I learned from the better of it. I ended up changing my contract, which is now 13 pages long. Um, and that gives me um, a certain sense of protection, but also gives me a certain sense of satisfaction that I've made my point across to them. They understand it, they've signed on it. And it's with this understanding that we're coming to this wedding, that both of us treat each other with utmost respect. Um, because I'm going to be observing them at their best. I have to be able to like them. So that's important. I think we're almost out Thank of you. time, Vishal, but uh, just to wrap up things, uh, there are two questions, uh, last two questions, we'll keep it at that. Uh, there's one more question from YouTube is, uh, Harsh Bansal wanted to ask, how long before the wedding starts do you connect with your family? Months before, um, months before, sometimes in the earlier bookings of a year before, which is when we are normally booked. And then we keep touching base with them. We keep in touch with them. It's nice to know them. I go, I always go earlier to the wedding, a few days earlier if possible, spend some time with the family, um, get to know who they are, get to do a location recce of the space. Um, if it's in a different country, get to know the culture of the country and why they chose it. Um, if they've lived there, then get to understand their friends and family from that place. Um, and involve yourself. It's, it's literally like making a movie. So how you do research for each film, 
how you do a location scout for each film. We treat wedding films with the same respect. Can I can I ask an added question to that, please? Yes. Uh, th th this seems like an like a huge undertaking. So, since you are there, you know, right from the very start, is it possible that they might consult you in the the decoration palette? Like, yes, like yes. You would, fact, like, like you would be like also the production designer, so to speak. If, if, because you'd say, fact, that, yeah, no, this might help, this might come in the way, this might be, these colors right, these colors wrong. Would you be true. a part like the production? I do. Wedding planners sit with me, brides and grooms sit with me, especially the ones who plan a year before. It's very exciting because they get to sit with me and I get to have a say in how they should light up, whether the, whether, whether the wedding is happening indoors or outdoors, what location they're choosing. I get a chance to to have my point across. I can tell them what ceremonies they can have and how they can structure their weddings because Indian weddings tend to be very unstructured. Um, things happen all over the place. Um, aunties and uncles come from every angle in every direction. But it's nice to have structure to a wedding so that we can shoot without having um, people crossing our frames and blocking them and we can still make it look cinematic and block them beautifully. So people are doing, people are doing this and they do consult us, which really helps because we, can, we have a say in the control of a wedding when the bride walks in, when the groom walks in, what the play should be like, what the frame can be like, um, what the color palette is, because that's very critical um, in making something look a certain way. Hello? Yes. Hi. Hello? Devang, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, uh, sorry, there was some uh, participant who had just unmuted their mics. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to ask you uh, one last question. I think there has been a question which has been repeatedly asked uh, desperately by Sai Kiran Pabala that what, what made you name the company The Wedding Filmer? What made me name the company The Wedding Filmer? I guess the name <laughs> itself. I wanted, so I wanted something that could become like Xerox or like Bisleri. That if somebody then says, Apka wedding filmer <laughs> um, So I, I think we, we's now, it's now become synonymous to, to that. And I, and I think because we wanted to not say that we shoot wedding videos, we wanted to be more film like. Um, I think it was the only way to do it. And that URL was open, um, it was available. Um, and I think it was the only name that came to my head. And I picked it up instantly and created the logo almost the next day with a designer awesome. in New York. Awesome. I think sometimes our gut tells us the right thing to do. At the right yeah, point. I talked about clarity. I think when yeah. you feel like you're clear about an idea, um, how how much passion you you chase that idea with defines how successful you will be. Awesome. Vinay, Vinay, can you check wedding photo wall has taken or not taken the name? <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, uh, Vinay, over to you for the closing comments. Uh, thank you so much, Vishal. Uh, it's been really thank fantastic. You too. Uh, I think, you know, there are, there are, there may be about 50, 60 more questions. We are running, hey, out, running out of time. We can, we, what you can do is you can send them to um, Archer yeah, and I will answer all done. of them on social yeah. media for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Cool. See you around. Okay. See thank you. you. Have everyone. a great day. Thank, thank you, everybody. guys. Thank you so thank much, you. Vishal. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. What a wonderful. Any of the yeah. Thank you so much, Vishal, sir. Thank you so much, Vishal.